Apple Motion has some really, really powerful animation tools right at its fingertips, but I want those animation tools over in Final Cut Pro. So today using Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you how to take those tools and throw them into Final Cut Pro. This is a video requested by Glasgow Dash on my Discord server for my patrons. Also, if you're a Patreon supporter, I've created a special download for you with a bunch of animation presets that you can install right now. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command option and end. Go ahead and select the final cut effect. After that, jumping to the right side, you're gonna wanna set your duration to something like five seconds. That's gonna give you two seconds for an intro animation and two seconds for an outro animation and then a second in the middle just for some nice flexibility. You can leave your presets at 4K or 1080, whichever you prefer, and you can leave your frame rate at whatever your typical preferred frame rate is. After that, you can push open. Selecting our effect source, we'll jump on over to the inspector and look at the properties. Now the effect source is the actual clip that will be in Final Cut Pro. This is what the effect will be applying to. So for example, if I were to set this down to something like 91%, the changes I made to this effect source will be applied in Final Cut Pro if I ever apply this effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that parameter. So to create these animations, what we're gonna do is come on over to the left side and find our position parameter. We're gonna go ahead and create an animation of our effect source sliding across the screen. Pushing this drop down arrow, we'll see X, Y, and Z axis. We're gonna find the X position and we're gonna go ahead and click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and we're going to select ramp. Now that we have the ramp animation, you can actually see it here down in the timeline under this purple parameter behavior. And what we're gonna do is animate the start value here. So currently it's set to zero, so nothing is going to happen. Let's go ahead and click and drag and bring that down until our effect source is completely off of the screen. You can see the red line, which is the actual animation path of our effect source. So if I play through, you can see how it is sliding onto the screen. Now there are a couple problems. One is it is way too slow for our taste. So to fix that, go ahead and select your ramp animation, go forward to two seconds, and then push O. That's going to speed up the ramp animation quite a bit. Then from there, we can come on up and find the curvature slider. Now, if I push Command-8, we can see the keyframe editor here at the bottom. Currently, it's actually just a straight linear line. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag up the curvature slider, and you'll see how that creates this nice S-curve. So it's going to ease in and ease out. So that's why I really love the ramp animation. It's just a very fast way to get a smooth animation, just like so. Now, one other thing we can do is actually manage how fast this animation plays out. So if I were to drag this end offset and watch the keyframe editor, you can see how it's shortening the length of the animation. So if we go all the way up to a full 100, now this animation is much faster. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at zero. And what we can do is click on this down arrow. We're gonna add it to a rig, we'll create a new rig, and we're gonna select a new slider rig. Just so it's really easy to understand in Final Cut Pro how long this animation is set up, we wanna show it in terms of seconds. So right now, the range is going all the way up to 100, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in terms of how long this animation plays out. Let's go ahead and change the range maximum to two. So that means that the highest this number on the right can go up to is two. So as of right now, it takes a full two seconds, which is our effect source should be at zero. But if we drag this down all the way to zero, we should have our effect source go all the way up to a full 100. So now if we play through, the animation will be much faster. Now, zero is not a very good indication of how fast this animation is playing out. To get the zero seconds to actually match, I'm gonna push Command-8 again so we can see our ramp animation. All I'm gonna do with this ramp selected is watch the animation here. We're gonna click and drag the end offset all the way up until the animation is completely set to zero. So right now, 120 seems to be the route. So now the animation is not playing out at all, but if we were to drag our slider halfway to one, it should take one second for the animation to play out. Or if we want it to play out over two seconds, now it is a two second animation. So this can be a really great way to dynamically set up how long an animation plays out in Final Cut Pro. One last super important thing is we can just go ahead and change the slider over to say speed. Then we can come over here to the speed indicator, go ahead, click that down arrow and push publish. So now this will show up in Final Cut. So we have the basic intro speed. 
Now we need to do the outro speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this ramp and I'm going to rename it to say ramp in. Then I'm gonna push command D and we're gonna create a ramp out. After that, I'm just gonna go ahead and locate the ramps down here in my timeline and I'm gonna click and drag this ramp out all the way to the far right side, just like so. Now the problem is, is the ramp out is actually going to the left side and it has the start value set rather than the end value. When the ramp starts, it's just immediately popping it to that left hand side. So what we need to do is change the start value to zero and then set the end value to whatever the opposite is of this start value. So right now it's negative 3,853. So now we can just make it positive 3,853. So now it's going to actually push off to the right hand side. So we now have a ramp in animation and we also have a ramp out animation. And what's great is because we created this speed slider beforehand, now both of those are actually tied to the animation changes we made. So if we want this to last two seconds, now it will last two seconds just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to one second and push command eight. Okay, so we have our basic animations all lined up for us in motion, ready to send over to Final Cut Pro. But there is one very important factor we need to do and that is actually setting animation in points and animation out points. So coming to the end of our ramp in, I'm gonna push shift M. That's gonna create this green marker. Double click that green marker and that's gonna give you this dialogue window. Here we can change our type from standard over to build in optional. This is gonna be really great because now we can actually choose the option of having our animation that plays out at the beginning or just skipping that all together and only having the end animation. So that's gonna give you a lot of flexibility in Final Cut Pro. After that, we can go to where the ramp out animation starts, push shift M again, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, double clicking that, and this time we're gonna change it to build out option just like so. So now in Final Cut Pro, we can choose whether we want the build in or the build out animation, and we can also choose how long that animation takes place. So now all we need to do to get this over into Final Cut Pro is to push Command S. We could just call this something like slide. We could create our own category for it. We'll just call it animation. And if you're really fancy, you could create your own themes for it, whatever you wanna do. I'll go ahead and publish that. So now if we were to jump into Final Cut Pro, I have this basic scene here. I'll go ahead and look up my slide animation. I'll go ahead, drag this on. And so now if we play it through, we'll see that our animation is taking place on this logo. But you're gonna notice a problem. Because of the aspect ratio of this logo, it's actually cutting it off on the left side. So the really quick fix for that is to push Option G on our logo. I'll go ahead and just create a compound clip. And now if I apply this animation to it, it should work just fine. And that is because it has changed the aspect ratio of our logo from this smaller rectangle over to a full 16 by nine rectangle that fills the entire screen. So now it shouldn't cut off the edges. But also more importantly, you can see up here in the top right, we can change the speed of the animation. So if we really wanna slow it down, or if we want to disable the build-in animation, we can do that. So now it's here and now it's sliding off to the right side. Again, we can change the speed to whatever we like and I'll go ahead and re-enable that build-in and disable the build-out just like so. And now we have a really fast animation of our logo. But that is just barely scratching the surface of all the amazing animation potential from Apple Motion. I've disabled the ramp animations and I've selected the effect source. This time we're gonna actually create just a basic hover animation. So we could go in here and locate the Y axis on our position. We'll click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and this time we're gonna select oscillate. If I push command eight, you can actually see what oscillating does. It creates this kind of wave animation. So if I go ahead and change the speed of this, you can really see it happening here. And now our effect source is actually just moving up and down just like so. So again, you could publish all the parameters over like speed, amplitude, phase, and now you have a beautiful hover animation that you can apply to whatever you want. And really the possibilities are endless. I strongly suggest that you just play around with the different parameter behaviors in Apple Motion and really get to know what each and every one of them does. And if you wanna watch a video where I cover every single parameter behavior, you can check out this video right here. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.